All right, everybody. Good morning. It's Bernard Nomberg. It is Thursday, not Tuesday, as we usually come to you. It's 10 o'clock Central. It is time for our weekly episode of Nomberg Law Live. Each week, we have interesting conversations with people in their areas of expertise. And I'm so pleased to have my guest, Beth Bradner, who is the Executive Director of the Breast Cancer Research Foundation of Alabama with us. With October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I thought it particularly important to bring on Beth as, uh, to talk today about what she does, the foundation and so many other things. So welcome, Beth, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for inviting me, I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And guys, Breast Cancer Research Foundation is based in Birmingham, but I'm gonna let Beth tell a little bit of the history and the, the mission of the foundation, and then we'll, we'll get into some good stuff that's going on at the foundation this month. Well, this is our 25th anniversary of the ICRFA, and um, we started in 1996. Um, at that time, our co-founders were uh, Bruce Sokol and Dolly O'Neill, and Bruce's wife, Dee Dee, was currently being treated at um, what is now the O'Neill Comprehensive Cancer Center. At that time, it was the UAB Cancer Center. Um, and Dolly O'Neill had been diagnosed and treated there as well. And they decided that they wanted to raise some money to support the um, research and treatments being done at UAB. So they got together friends, family, sponsors, the local business folks, and they did a golf tournament. And at the end of that tournament, they had $68,000 net, um, which was amazing. Um, for an inaugural event, and they donated that to UAB. And at that time, they decided we would really like to keep doing this. And so they formed the BCRFA. Uh, we are a local nonprofit, like you said, here in Birmingham. Um, and by our bylaws, all the funds that we raise stays in Alabama, supporting breast cancer research here. So 25 years later, um, we have invested over $11 million, all in Alabama, um, supporting local research projects and projects across the state as well. It, it really is remarkable what has been built in the last 25 years. Bruce and his wife, Dodie, were good, are good friends. Bruce, I've known forever. And I know Bruce's story and for him to have the courage way back when and beyond to share his story and to use this or create this platform that has benefited so many people is just a remarkable accomplishment. I know you're, you're proud of the work that you guys do and continue to do. Absolutely. Um, and Bruce is still very actively involved in the foundation. He's actually gonna go pick up a check from a local school that's raising money. Um, and he and his current wife, Carlton, are delightful people. And I enjoy working with them very much. And Dolly's family um, is also very involved in the foundation as well to this day, so. And it is, it's very close to their hearts, near and dear to them, but, and it is, it's, it's an ongoing project that hopefully one day we'll be able to, the foundation close its doors, but for now they're still continuing to do lots of, lots of great work that benefits so many Alabamians. And this month, particularly October, being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the foundation has tons of great things that are going on. And what I'd like to do, Beth, is take a few minutes and let's talk about how can people get involved? How can they donate? How can they donate their time? How can people who maybe are in need of medical care but just don't know where to start, reach out to the foundation and, and get some help? Absolutely. Well, um. There are tons of ways to support the foundation. You know, we raise, first off, we'll talk about money. Um, we raise money through community events, um, individual donations. Um, we have a breast cancer research specialty tag in the state of Alabama, which raised a um, half a million dollars last year. Um, and yes, <laughs> um, and the specialty tag, I'll just touch on that, is um, $50 added on to your normal registration for a motorcycle or um, car. And we receive as the foundation 4125 of that. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think of it like an annuity. 
you know, each year it renews and it's just automatically added in unless you say, hey, I want to stop this or I want to support another group or things like that. But ours is the gray one with the pink ribbon and it's the breast cancer research tag. Um, and that's a great way to show your support of investment, the investment in research, you know, um, one in eight women and one in a thousand men will be diagnosed. Um, so everyone knows someone whose life has been affected. Um, I have a family member who's currently undergoing treatment herself. Um, and so, you know, that is, you know, across the, across the nation, every two minutes, some, a woman is diagnosed. Um, and this year in Alabama, there'll be 4,400, well, 4,460 um, projected uh, women will be diagnosed this year. And we know that research um, saves lives. So that's what we're doing. Um, some other events, you know, there's, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and there is so much going on across the, across the region. Um, we recently held a motorcycle ride revving for research that raised $15,000. We had a Cahaba queue with Cahaba Brewing that was a barbecue competition that raised $25,000. Wow. Um, coming up this weekend is Calera Goes Pink, um, and it's a golf tournament, uh, and then we also had a disc golf tournament. Um, but coming up in November is we have Pink Up the Pace. And it is November 7th. It's at Crestline Field. Um, and it is $35 to register. It's November 7th. Um, and we have youth activities. There'll be a petting zoo um, in addition to an obstacle course. So just lots of things for the kiddos. It's family friendly. Um, and that's November 7th. Um, and all of these events and details on them are located at our website, which is BCRFA, so Breast Cancer Research Foundation of Alabama, bcrfa.org. And, and I put links to the website in the show notes for folks. Perfect. Um, and then there's also, in addition to our events, we have community partners, and that's one great way, you know, this organization was founded on grassroots support. And um, so there are individuals doing fundraisers throughout the month. There are businesses who join forces with BCRFA. So for example, Tamron Automotive and Stokes are donating $100 for every new car sold in the month of October to support our efforts. Um, Brick and Tin on Monday, um, on October 18th is donating 10% of all of their sales to BCRFA. Um, in addition to doing pink, pink items that we're receiving all the proceeds from throughout the month. Um, so there is just tons of ways that people can lean in, you know, every gift helps individuals may make donations at our website, or if they're interested in volunteering their time, we always, you know, for all of these events, throughout the year we don't just do it in october we're raising money all year long and volunteers can um, let us know they'd like to get involved uh, there's a form on our website that they can just fill out and we receive it and we send periodic updates on what our needs are um, throughout the time we also have resources on our website to um, other organizations that you know are are not our organization focuses on supporting um, research and um, but there are great organizations like Forge locally to walk alongside people who are in the midst of their journey uh, with breast cancer. Um, there's also the Comprehensive Cancer Center has lots of resources available. So um, one thing is I would say to our folks is if you are diagnosed or if you have a loved one who's diagnosed, lean into your community uh, for support as you go through um, the journey and um, get the help that you need. Well, there really is no shortage of fundraising opportunities, uh, volunteer opportunities, and even, and more importantly, the ability to be seen, evaluated, and treated. It's just taking that first step, whichever, wherever you are in your journey or your participation, because as you said earlier, almost everybody has a family member, a neighbor, a friend who's been impacted one way or another. And 
what I think gets a little bit or a lot less publicity is men who are also diagnosed. Um, it really is um, sometimes very surprising when you learn of a man who has been diagnosed, but it's a very real situation, uh, not nearly the numbers percentage wise, but Beth, as a, a side note, if, if a person wants to volunteer or attend some of these fundraisers, what are the chances they'll see Carlton and, and, and Bruce at one of these events? Chances are very good. Um, we had a casino night um, earlier this year and Bruce and Carlton were there. We had, um, they were there at the barbecue event. Um, so, and they'll be at Pink Up the Pace too on November 7th. So they are actively engaged and involved and supporting to this day, you know, and like I, like I said, um, we've invested $11 million um, in breast cancer research because of those types of um, events and fundraisers and activities that we do. And I know Bruce is so proud of the organization that he helped start. And that's just making a tremendous difference in the lives of so many. It, it, truly, it truly is. And for those of you just joining us or maybe joining us later on, I'm talking with Beth Bradner with the Breast Cancer Research Foundation of Alabama. We're talking about opportunities to volunteer your time, to make donations to this foundation. Uh, for those of you who are just starting your journey of being diagnosed and being treated, there's also resources there. And I've put a link to the website that all of these things we're talking about, that's where you can start uh, your journey. Beth, when you say that the money is kept in state, a lot of people uh, become skeptical when they make donations to big foundations and they see they've done wonderful big things and lots of money. What is my $50 going to do? That kind of thing. I, I want to I want you to, to share, what does that mean that this money stays in state? I want people to know where their money is, is going so they don't have a hesitancy from that perspective. Absolutely. Well, um, all of the, each year, um, we invest in breast cancer research projects here in Alabama. Uh, we partner with the O'Neill Comprehensive Cancer Center to support the breast cancer projects that they identify um, as the leading edge and most promising research through their O'Neill Invest programs. Um, I just wrote a check for $400,000 um, to support um, three new projects that were just identified and fully vetted um, as, uh, you know, outstanding potential um, to advance research. Um, as I mentioned, we are not, um, I am not a doctor. I am not a researcher. I, um, I help raise money. I, I work in the nonprofit space. So we lean into medical experts to identify projects because I don't have the, the, know, the knowledge in that, in that space. And so um, all of the funds that we raise go to support projects like these ones that were just recently awarded. Um, and additionally, in, in addition to what we support at UAB, we send out an annual request for proposals across the state, um, which is currently right now, we're accepting proposals from outside of UAB. Um, so I've spoken with people in Auburn, um, down at Mobile at the Mitchell Cancer Institute um, at Hudson, Hudson Alpha in Huntsville. Um, so we try to, so we will receive those proposals. And then again, we will lean into medical experts to evaluate them to make sure that we're funding good science. That's where we want donors to feel very comfortable that when they donate to our organization, it will be used to advance quality research that will ultimately save lives. Um, we have a very low overhead at the BCRFA. We are a staff of two full-time people um, and one part-time person. Um, and last year we were able to invest, despite the pandemic, $1.05 million, um, all in breast cancer research in Alabama. Wow, that's just, that's just fantastic. I have so many other questions. I need to narrow my focus uh, for you. If I'm a business owner 
somewhere in the state of Alabama, and this is something that's of particular interest to me. Can I partner with the foundation? You mentioned some businesses earlier. How does that work and how do we start that process if I'm a, say a restaurateur or some other kind of business that wants to, to get into uh, fundraising for these, these things? You may absolutely give us a call at 205-996-5463. Or shoot us an email at bcrfa at uab.org. Our office is on the UAB campus. Um, and just start the conversation. We'll let us know what you're thinking. We have a simple form for you to fill out to help us understand what you're doing. Um, it also lets us know if you'd like to use our logo, um, what your forecasted goals are, how we can lean in and support you um, during your initiatives. Um, for companies that want to do um, online fundraising, like right now we're partnering with Renaissance Bank, uh, banks across the state, and people can make donations onto, we create a campaign fundraising page that people can donate to. Um, and that's in addition to what they're doing in their branches. Um, and other ideas like ARC Realty is donating $25 for every new house listed in the month of October. And um, their, their agents are able to make donations, the community is able to support those. So there are just tons of ways. And it all just starts with a conversation either on the phone or start chatting via email and we'll brainstorm and help you um, support and engage your um, employees as well if they'd like to or your community. It really sounds like you can be as creative as you want to be with your business to be able to do this. So it really is, it sounds very user friendly, that's for sure. Uh, the other, I really the last big topic I want to want to touch on is for those families who are just starting their medical journey. They might have just recently got it being given a diagnosis, or maybe they don't even know what their diagnosis is uh, at this point. Are the resources within the foundation where if somebody just needs a push, just needs to know who to start contacting within the medical community, does the foundation offer any of those types of resources? We um, don't offer treatment our, ourselves, but we connect, can connect you with um, other agencies such as FORGE. FORGE is a tremendous resource for those being diagnosed. It has some great tip sheets on how to, you know, questions to ask your doctor, um, some, you know, and things like that. And then we also on our website have links to some information at the American Cancer Society. You know, there's a lot of great uh, resources now through the internet that's just amazing. You know, I myself um, hadn't personally experienced breast cancer. And when I came to the foundation almost eight years ago, I was, I, I learned a lot. You know, I leaned in and I was reviewing a lot of those sites myself, myself and trying to understand, you know, stage what, you know, st the different types of breast cancer and the different stages and chemotherapy. And um, so I always feel like knowledge is power and going in and understanding um, what's going on. When you're going to uh, appointments with your doctor, there's going to be a lot of information. Bring someone with you um, to help capture what's being said because it's, it's a lot. Um, and who can be there to support you. Um, and really, I would highly recommend if you're in the Birmingham area, Forge is a great resource for as you navigate treatment itself. You know, we, we support um, people through advancing research and new diagnostics and new um, drugs and treatments and things like that. And Forge is also here helping um, as you walk through the journey yourself as well. It, it truly is amazing how each year, every couple of years, I don't know if the standard of care changes, but the quality of what the doctors and medical science has achieved and continues to achieve. And, and a lot of that, at least in our state, 
can be attributed to the efforts of the Breast Cancer Research Foundation of, of Alabama. And Beth, I wanna thank you for sharing about the foundation, a little bit of Bruce's story and his family's story. And thank you for, for just spending some time with us today. Thank you, I, I truly appreciate it. It's been my, my pleasure. And again, guys, on the show notes, comments, I put the link to the website for the foundation where all of this information Beth has referred to in our conversation, you can do your exploring and contacting there. So again, thank you for another interesting conversation with people in their areas of expertise as we try to every Tuesday. I know today's Thursday, but every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Nomberg Law Live, please continue to be safe out there. Do what's right for you and your family, and we're going to hopefully come out of this pretty soon. But y'all have a great rest of your week, weekend, and we'll catch you next week. Take care.